Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create low poly fire using the volume to mesh modifier in Blender 2.91. So make sure you have the latest version installed and you'll be good to go. To get started with this tutorial we're first going to delete the default cube and then press shift A and add in a cylinder. This is going to be our inflow object and I'm going to press S and Z and scale it down. From there, I'm going to go over to the object panel, click on quick effects, and then quick smoke. This will automatically add a domain for us, and we can go into front view, scale it up to the size that we want. I'll scale it along the Z because I do want the fire to be pretty tall. Somewhere around here will be perfectly fine. From there, I'm going to go over to the physics tab, scroll down to the bake, and switch this over to modular. Now that we have the bake button, we can import these settings quickly. I'm also going to turn on is resumable. The first thing that I'll do is actually add in a wind force field. So you can press shift A, go to force field, and then add in a wind force field. I'm going to rotate this in 90 degrees, place it over on the left. And currently the strength is too high. So I'm going to set this to 0.1. The flow I'm going to bring to 0.2. And the noise amount I'm going to bring to 0.5. This will just give the fire a slight bit of movement along the right side. And I think it will look good. From there, we can select our domain. The resolution, I'm going to go with 128. Since we're going to be using the volume to mesh modifier, you don't need to go too high with this. So 128 will work perfectly fine. From there, I'm going to scroll down and make sure you don't use adaptive domain because I've noticed when importing in the open VDB, sometimes this breaks it and it looks very strange. So make sure that is turned off. Underneath the fire tab, we're going to set the reaction speed. This is the height of the flames. The lower you set this to, the fire will be higher. And the higher you set this to, the fire will be lower. It's a little bit confusing. It seems backwards, but that's how it works. So in that case, I'm going to bring it to 0.4. So we have taller flames. The vorticity amount, I'm going to bring up 2.7. So this will give the fire a little bit more swirls and randomness. The cast setting, I'm going to set the end frame to 150. And you also want to set a custom folder for the bake. Since we're going to be importing it as an open VDB for the volume to mesh modifier, we need to set a custom folder. I'm going to click this button here and then navigate to a folder. Once you have found it, you can click accept and then we can select our inflow object. Underneath the flow type, we're going to switch this over to fire and the fuel option. This controls the randomness and and the fuel option. This controls the flame rate. So if you set this higher, it'll be more chaotic. We're going to set this to 1.5 underneath the flow source. We're going to set the surface emission. This is how close the fire is to the surface of the mesh. The higher you set this to, the more spread out it will be. I'm going to bring this down to 0.8. So the fire is a lot closer to the cylinder. Finally, underneath the texture, we're going to enable a texture to control where the fire is placed on our object. This will give it a much more realistic result. I'm going to switch over to the texture panel and create a new texture. I'm going to set the type over to clouds and then the size of the clouds we're going to bring down to 0.1 and then of course we're going to open up the colors and bring the contrast up so there's a bigger definition between the white and the black. Here is a preview of our texture and you can see here where the black values are there will be no fire and where the white values are there will be fire. Now if we go back over to the physics tab we can select that texture that we just created. Underneath the texture we're going to select this one. And the last thing that we will do is actually animate the offset value. Right now, the texture is placed right on the mesh and it's not going to move. This doesn't really give us a realistic result. So in order to fix that, we're going to add a keyframe to the offset. Switch this over to 150 and bring the offset to 0.75 and then add in another keyframe. Another thing that we need to do is change the interpolation type of these keyframes. Right now, it's using a curve to smooth it out. So some parts are slower and some parts are faster. This is not going to look good for our final render. So I'm going to select both of these keyframes, click T and select linear. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and bake in our simulation. So I'm going to save my project and then click on bake data. Once this is done, we will import this in as an open VDB. All right, the bake has finished. But if we play through this, you'll notice our flames are not that tall. In order to fix this, I'm going to scale down my inflow object. And I'm also going to come over to the settings and switch up a couple things here. I'm going to scale down my domain as well, somewhere around here. I'm going to free this data and the wind force field is also a little bit too strong. So if I select it, I can switch this over to 0.05 just so it's half the strength. And then finally, we can switch the reaction speed down here to 0.3. 
With that done, I'm going to save my project and then bake this in and hopefully this will be a little bit better. All right, there we go. I'm happy with this result. So now let's create a new Blender file and import this in. Of course, the first thing that we're going to do is delete the default cube and then press Shift A and we're going to add in a volume and then import open VDB. Navigate to where your cache is, that where you saved it. Mine is right here and you're going to want to click on the data right here. Select this folder and you will see all of these different file types. Press A to select everything import open VDB. And there we go. We can see it in our scene. And if we go over to the volume tab, you can see all the different settings that we can select. So if I click on flame, we can see all of the flame data. Perfect. Now we need to add in a mesh to use as the volume to mesh. I'm going to press shift A, add in a cube just like this and move it over to the side, scale it down a little bit and then go over to the modifier tab, add modifier and volume to mesh. Underneath the object, we're going to select the fluid underscore data right there and change the grid name over to the flame. Once we do this, you will see the flame right here and it is a mesh and you can see it. And if we play it, it looks pretty good to get that very blocky low poly look. We need to add in a couple of different modifiers. First off, I'm going to click add modifier and use a triangulate modifier. This will triangulate all of the vertices and this looks a little bit better and a little bit more low poly. To get that very sharp, low poly look, we need to add in a remesh modifier. So over in the modifier tab, we can click on remesh right here and switch it over to the sharp mode. I'm going to turn off it, remove disconnected pieces. So we get that piece right there. And sometimes the fire will fly outwards and that's what we want. And you can control the low polyness with the octary depth right here. If you want higher, you can turn that up. If you want shorter, you can turn it down. I'm going to go with a value of five. And as you can see, this looks pretty good. It looks very low poly and we can scroll through here and here is our result. If you want smooth shading, you can turn that on right here and turn on smooth shading in the volume to mesh, but I think that gives it a very weird look. So I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to select my empty right here and go into the top view and place it in the middle of our scene. And then we're going to work on the material to get that really cool low poly look to do this. I'm going to press shift a and add in a plane. So we have a ground. Then I'm going to select my volume right here, open up the shader editor by splitting this view and switching over to the shader editor. And now let's create a new material. So I'm going to click a new up here and we're going to call this material flames. I'm going to delete the principled shader and then add in an emission shader right here. And then that's not an emission shader. We want an emission shader. I'm also going to add in a mix shader and a diffuse shader right here. If we take the BSDF and plug that into the bottom input, and the emission plug that into the top input and then the shader goes into the material output we should see this result one thing to keep in mind if you are using ev the mesh is not going to emit light if you want it to emit light you need to switch over to the cycles render engine which i'm actually going to do so we get that light color i'm going to scroll back and delete the lamp that's in our scene we're not going to need that and i'm also going to move the fluid data you can see all of the smoke up here i'm going to move it to a new layer so you can select it, click M and move it to a new collection and we can just call it collection two and hit OK. I'm also going to hide this collection by clicking that little box on the side next to it and that will get rid of that collection so it won't show up in the rendered view. Now we can see our object here and we can play around with the color and mess with all of these different values. The first thing that I'll do is actually add in a gradient texture so we can control the color at the top and the bottom of the fire. I'm going to press shift A, add in a converter color ramp and we'll place that right here. Shift A, add in a texture and a gradient texture. If we take the color value, plug that into the factor and the color into the emission color, you won't really be able to see anything at the moment. That's because we need to add in a texture coordinate to control where the gradient is on our mesh. An easy way to do that, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can select the gradient texture, hit Control T, and this will automatically add in a texture coordinate node and a mapping node for you. What I think we need to do is set the Y to a positive 90 right there. And then if we play around with the location, if we drag the X value a little bit lower, you can see the gradient is coming in right at the bottom. Now currently it's very sharp. So in order to get a more smooth transition, we can turn up the scale value or actually turn down the scale value. So if we bring the Z value down to like 0.1 or so, and then change the X location a little bit lower now, we will have a lot smoother transition somewhere around there looks pretty good. So as you can see, it's gray down here and then becomes white at the top. And that is much smoother. 
And now that we have our gradients working, we can change the color. So over in the color ramp, I'm going to select the white color and switch this over to a reddish color, somewhere around here or so. And then I'm gonna hit the plus sign, drag this a little bit this way, and switch this over to a lighter orange color, something like that. And finally, down at the bottom, we're gonna go with a very light orange color. I'm gonna drag that all the way up to white and place it somewhere around here. And then we need to play around with the location of these handles. Something like this will look good. And then of course, you need to come back over to the mapping node and play around with the location. All right, there we go. I'm happy with these settings. Over in the mapping node, I set the X location to negative 0.15 and the scale of the Z direction to 0.3. This looks much better. Over in the emission shading, I'm gonna set the strength of this up to 10. And we can see here we get a much brighter flame. And then I'll drag this this way slightly. There we go, that looks pretty good. And another thing that we're gonna do is mess around with this diffuse shader. If you look at the animation again, you will see I get these black lines along the edges. And to do this, we're gonna be using a Fresnel node. To do this, I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a Fresnel node in the input tab. And then if we take the factor and plug that into the mix shader, then we have to change the color of the diffuse over to black we can sort of get that look. But currently you can't see it too well and that's because we need to play around with the contrast. So add in another color ramp, then take the black value up a little bit and bring the white value closer this way. And there we can see all of those lines are coming in. To see exactly what this Fresnel is doing, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can Control shift left click on the color ramp and this is the look that we're getting. So where the white values are, that is where the black diffuse is going to be. So if you want less, bring it over this way. If you want more, drag it a little bit closer. Something like this will look pretty good. Now if we control shift left click on the mix shader, we can see here it's a little bit less, so I might drag it this way. And I'm happy with that result. And there you go. So now what you have to do is just render this out into an animation and you will get a very cool low poly fire. So there you go. That is how you create low poly fire in Blender 2.91. I wanted to give a shout out to you guys because we just reached 40,000 subscribers. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to the next 10 where we reach 50,000 subscribers. So if you are new, make sure you leave a like and sub down below. But that's going to do it. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.